Well, good morning, everyone. I want to take this opportunity just to personally welcome each and every one of you to church uh, this morning. We're so glad that you are here. Uh, you need to know that it's not by accident, but we believe by divine appointment. God has something for each and every one of us. For those of you joining us online this morning, uh, we're just honored to be able to do life with you and to have you part of our, our church family. Uh, Naomi and I are just so happy to be part of what God is doing here in Watford City. Amen? God has been so good to us all and to be a part of such an amazing church. Um, you will hear me use the phrase quite often that it's a joy and a privilege to do life together. Uh, every day is a gift from God and life is so wonderful. Every once in a while there's a hiccup in our lives, but God is the God of the hiccups. And uh, this, this morning, it's a great privilege to be able to bring the word of God to you. During the summer months, Pastor Sheldon always takes us on a journey through one of the uh, books of the Bible. And this year, we as a congregation, we've been walking and journeying through uh, a powerful book, the book of Acts. Uh, it's the Acts, it's the recording of the Acts of the apostles in the early church. It's the acts, the recording of the acts of the Holy Spirit of God released in the church, released in people's lives and families. And um, if there was ever a time that we needed the power that was found in the book of Acts, it would be the days and times that we're living in, amen? And uh, I've had the privilege of just lingering for several weeks now in Acts chapter 3. That's going to be our, our text this morning. And I've entitled my message, and you'll want to catch this. I've entitled my message, The Holy Spirit Difference. Let me say it again. I've entitled my message this morning, The Holy Spirit Difference. Um, we can never exhaust Listen now, we can never exhaust or even imagine at times all that God, the Holy Spirit, has in store for us. I think sometimes, if anything, we as believers, as a church, we kind of live below par all that God has in store for us. I realize that we are bombarded every day with negative news about our world, our nation, our country, the challenges that we face even within our own city and county. But I believe that the best days of the Holy Ghost for the church and for you and I is ahead of us. Here's what I've discovered when we're talking about the Holy Spirit difference. I believe that there's a remnant of believers of all generations that are hungry, longing for, and pursuing the power of God, the Holy Spirit. I've talked to enough of our teenagers and of the younger generation that are, would tell me, said, Pastor Brady, I don't want to hear the stories. I, I don't want to hear about the good old days of the moving of God and revival meetings and miracles. I want to see them. I want them to take place in my generation. And we're going to pursue God with a, with a hunger and a thirst until we see an outpouring of Acts 2 in our lives. I've been around the church pastoring long enough to know that there's an older generation that we could tell our stories. Do you remember back in the day and the time where we used to have revival meetings for two weeks? Sometimes they would go on for four weeks. Do you remember the people that would get saved and the miracles of healing and people receiving the baptism of, of the Holy Spirit and, and families that were united and bodies that were... Do you, listen now, do you remember those days? And the older folks would look at me and say, Pastor Brady, we don't want to be old people reminiscing in the past. We are believing God for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit today. Signs and wonders and miracles and power. People come to the Lord, miracles take a place, lives being changed. We want it now. And I said, count me in. I'm with you. Acts chapter 3 is all about this, church. Acts chapter 3 is about the Holy Spirit's difference in each of our lives. 
we have as our mission statement for our church here at WCAG, our mission statement is, and, and you've heard Pastor Sheldon preach on it many times, but I want to remind you that our mission statement here at this church is that of empowering spirit-led disciples to change our world. Let me say it again, but this is the heartbeat and thrust of our, our church family. Empowering, empowering spirit-led disciples to change our world. That is Acts 3 in motion. What I want you to know is that God is still the same God of Acts 3 as he is today. And I want to walk through Acts chapter 3. I want to kind of give it to you and serve it to you in, in great nuggets of truth. And I want to declare, first of all, listen very carefully, that the Holy Spirit difference, the Holy Spirit difference is always personal and private. The working of God, the Holy Spirit's difference in, in my life, in your life, is always going to be personal and private. God working within us. The working of God, the Holy Spirit, in a person's life is a powerful, intimate work of God. All believers, you need to hear this, all believers from the moment that they personally believe in and accept Jesus Christ as their savior of their lives and as Lord of their lives, the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God takes up residence in your heart. What does that say? If you are here today and you are a born again believer, the Holy Spirit of God lives and dwells in you. Then we talk about the baptism, the empowering, the endowment of power of the Spirit in our lives is like another notch up of God being active and released in our lives personally and privately. I love the expression of Billy Graham, and he would often uh, refer to this. He said, the Bible says, the Bible says to you and I this truth in 1 Corinthians six nineteen. what don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? Church family, there are times, from time to time, it's kind of like that old V8 commercial. Wow, I should have had a V8. And, and maybe Dustin will be saying that next Saturday. I don't know. Um, it, it went on, he's doing his bike, bicycle run. And uh, just 50 miles. Anyway, it's pretty easy. Um, Thank you for your ministry for Speed the Light and the other men that are going with that. I want to tell you something. We need the Holy Spirit to kind of knock on our hearts once in a while and say, John Brady, don't you know that your body is the temple, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit of God that, that you received, that he's taken up residence that day when you were 17 years old and you invited Jesus into your heart and life, that he took up residence there? And I said, yes, God, you are with me. The Bible says that if the same Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, that resurrection power, lives and dwells within us, that God the Holy Spirit will quicken and make us alive, our mortal bodies alive by the Spirit of God that lives within us. And so the very first thing that, that we need to know is that that God's Holy Spirit, the difference is God at work within our lives personally and privately. The scripture that we support this with is Acts 3, very first verse 1, where it simply says, Peter and John, the apostles, the disciples, the followers of Christ, the leaders of the early church, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in a three o'clock prayer meeting. God did, listen now, God did an amazing, beautiful, great and personal and private work within the lives of Peter and John. Their, their transition came at their point of conversion. Uh, Peter got saved on a fishing boat. He was out fishing when he got saved. And, and John and and an inner and outer change, transformation took place in these men's lives. Remember, God works privately and personally 
in my life and in your life. Peter and John went from sinners far from God to experience the salvation of God's love and becoming complete disciples and followers of Jesus Christ. From sinners to disciples to follow God. That's the work of the Holy Spirit within a person. They, John and Peter, had personal struggles and failures and sin and flesh and attitudes and habits. They went with all of this. When God started to work within them and clean them up, Jesus looked at Peter one day and said, I tell you, Peter, it's on this rock, you, Peter, that I'm going to build my church on and the gates of hell will not be able to, to overcome it. He went from sinner, saint, insecure, fearful Peter to being the rock. The book of Acts, chapter 3, where God is beginning to build and establish his church. Peter and John were part of the disciples that were hiding in the upper room right after the, the death of, of the Lord Jesus and before his ascension, after the resurrection. And Jesus walked into that upper room in a resurrected body miraculously. And Jesus made this statement to Peter, John, and the others in the upper room. He said to them, he breathed on them. He could see that they were fearful and afraid and insecure and hopeless. The Bible says that Jesus breathed on them. And then Jesus said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. And God is going around this beautiful sanctuary this morning. You know what God is doing? He's walking around. And he says, ah, here's a brother. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Ah, there's a young family. <laughs> Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Ah, Pastor Hector and Sarah. Ah, <laughs> in Spanish. <laughs> in Spanish. <laughs> you got to use your imagination, church, at the. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Something transformed Peter and John from cowering in the upper room to being the one that was to preach the sermon on the day of Pentecost. Do you know that God could have picked anybody that he wanted? But I believe God had his eye on Peter. Ah, a man of weakness, a man of flaw, a man that denied me. A man that was once far away from me, Peter. You're up. Preach on the day of Pentecost. God is always at work. Listen. Listen very carefully. God is always at work in our lives. He's always doing something that's personal and private. Welcome it. He is getting the old out of us, the old John Brady, the flesh, the attitude, the stubbornness, the rebellion, the anger. He's getting all that out of John. Get, got a clean house. Because what I'm going to pour in you is going to be the difference maker. I'm going to pour in you my Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's different is always positional and purposeful. This is a, a truth that maybe you've never heard of or thought maybe no one's ever told you. But many of you are in this, this place right now where God is going to be positioning you for a purpose. In Acts chapter 3, reading verses 2 through 6, listen very carefully to the word of the Lord. As they... Peter and John, approached the temple, positional. A man lame from birth was being carried in, purposeful. Each day he was put inside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so that he could beg from the people going into the temple. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he knew, he heard about Peter and John. The scuttlebutt was out. 
They heard what happened on the day of Pentecost. It was the gossip of the town. And somebody told him, that's Peter and that's John. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently. Verse 4, that's, you need to underline in your Bible that Peter and John under the anointing of the Holy Spirit looked at this man with intent. And Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver and I don't have any gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. Underline that. I will give you what I have, the fullness of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Get up and walk. Peter and John were on their way to a prayer meeting. I believe that it was a part of their daily walk with Christ as believers, as Christians, as leaders. It was part of their routine of life. It was who they were. It's what, how they lived. Now, we need to gleam some, uh, some really important truth here. That as believers, there has to be, within each of our lives, a personal hunger and longing to know God and to walk with God. There has to be within the life of every Christian, not some, not a few, but every believer, there has to come to that point of a spirit of devotion and routine of living for God. You may hear the term personal devotions or walk with Christ, but the Bible says that the early church in Acts 2, the last part of that chapter, it says that the the church, the believers, and I think for sure that was Peter and John, that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They, they met regularly to, to talk about the teachings of the apostle Paul and the word of God, the scriptures as they knew it. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles' word. They devoted themselves to fellowship with each other. We need each other as the body of Christ. They devoted themselves to doing Christian services and deeds, helping you. Somebody needed a loaf of bread and a gallon of milk, I'll take that over to the Smith family right now. It was within the body of Christ that there was a Christian spirit and attribute of ministering, loving, and giving, and helping each other in time of need. And with that Christian service and spirit of worship, they devoted themselves to prayer. The more prayer, listen now, the more time that we spend talking to Jesus, the more infilling of the Holy Spirit God can give us. And I know what some of you think, so Pastor Brady, I just can't stop and pray uh, uh, by myself. I, I said, no, when you're talking to Jesus, you might be in a pickup. Some of you might be driving a semi talking to Jesus. Some of you are in your office. Some of you are on the tractor. A lot of hay season, that means a lot of prayer time. Some of you are at home with the little ones, and it might take place in the laundry room. You're talking to Jesus. The radio, Christian radio station on, you're worshiping the Lord, and the Spirit of God, listen now, is in your house. The atmosphere is changing because of the Spirit and the presence of God. And this is what was taking place within Peter's life. There was a positioning and a purpose. It wasn't by accident that that man was at that gate at that time. But I believe, and the Bible brings out by divine appointment. Some theologians believe that this man, the Bible says, lame from birth, was probably, it could have been, in his 40s. Therefore, that man could have been placed at that gate called Beautiful anywhere from 10, 20, 30 years of his life, same place, same time. There was no doubt in my mind that as Peter and John and the other disciples made their way to prayer meeting, that they walked past. Can you imagine a busy city, uh, business taking place, transpiring, uh, trading, animals uh, being sold, uh, Starbucks coffee shop to your left, uh, 
There's all sorts of things and hundreds of people out of those thousands making their way to the church for a prayer meeting. Peter, no doubt, Peter and John walked by this man, the others, uh, begging for alms and help. It was a Christian thing to do. The believers would often bring offering to the temple to give to the work of the Lord. And, but on this special day, it was a day designed and ordained by God. And there was a positioning by the Holy Spirit in Peter and John's life. But you got to get the rest of it. It wasn't just Peter and John that were positioned by God. But on this particular day, this man lame from birth, God positioned him to be there for this divine encounter to take place. And on this day, they, they knew, he knew, the beggar knew who Peter and John were. And he was hollering, alms for the poor. You give me some money. I need help. Bless me. Bless me. Help me. Help me. And on that particular day, day the Holy Spirit purposed and placed positionally Peter and John at that gate, at that time with that man. And on this time, a divine appointment, the Holy Spirit came on Peter. And the Bible says that with intent, he looked at this man, eyeball to eyeball. And he said to that man, look at me. And I believe that it was said, those words were said with an authority. I don't think that lame man could have looked anywhere else because of the Holy Spirit's intent. Look at me. And the man lame from birth thought, ah, good. Oh, I'm going to be blessed today. My, silver and gold, silver and gold, silver and gold. And Peter came up, looked at that man, he said, silver and gold I don't have. But listen, but such as I have, such as I have, I give you. Stand up and walk. Listen, you want to know where the such as I have came from? It came from Peter and John in the private moment and in the personal moment that they spent in the presence of God. That day, God positioned them with a purpose. And they, because of their devotion and being filled with God, God was able to use them instantaneously. Look at me. Silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, I give to you. It was intent. It, it was directional. It was purposeful, it was anointed, it was divine, it was ordained. Such as I have, I give to you. Stand up and walk. And the Bible says that Peter reached out his right hand and grabbed the man's right hand and lifted him up for an instant healing. His ankles, his feet, his legs, the muscles that have never worked in his life are now strengthened and touched by the almighty God, the power of the Holy Ghost in him. Not only was Peter, you need to hear this, not only was Peter and John positioned by the Holy Spirit, on that day, that man lame from birth was positioned to receive his miracle from God because he was to be a testimony of God's divine purpose and power. And I would say to you that we need to be so full of God that we need to allow the Holy Spirit to position us for a purpose. To position us for a purpose in one or two ways. Either to be the person that's used by God to say and look at people intently and say, silver and white, gold I don't have. But what I have, I'm going to give you. I have the power of God in me. It's God, not me. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, stand up and walk. <laughs> Ask God to position you. 
Make, make yourself available. But some of you are the lame man. Oh, you're feeling helpless. You have needs. You're in despair. You're counting on other people. God is wanting to position you, position you to receive your miracle today as well. The Holy Spirit difference is always powerful and public. Let me say this again. The Holy Spirit's different. It goes from personal and private to a positioning for a purpose. Now it's going to become public and it's going to become powerful. In Acts chapter 3, verse 7 through 11, we read, Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, the man jumped up, stood on his feet and began to walk. Then walking and leaping and shouting and praising God, he went to the temple with Peter and John. What, why not? And the Bible says all the people saw him walking and heard him praising God, everybody. And what they, that's everybody, realized that that's a lame beggar. They had seen so often, maybe 10, 15, 20, 25 years at the gate of beautiful. The Bible says that all of them were astonished and astounded. And they all rushed out in amazement to, the, to Solomon's corner and where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John and he was declaring his miracle, his testimony to the glory of God. There's going to become a time where you're going to move from your private and personal relationship with God that God is going to position you with a purpose position you with a purpose and your position and purpose is going to be public and it's going to be powerful it's going to be a powerful move of God God still honors faith and prayers of those who need a miracle God is still answering and the answer is silver and gold we have a none have we none but such as we have we give you it's in the name of Jesus do you know that God has put all of his love and attributes and character and passion and compassion in his son, his name was Jesus. At the name of Jesus, people are saved, redeemed, rescued, delivered, set free, healed, forgiven, made new. The Bible says clearly that there is no other name like the name of Jesus because it is above every name that we could ever have. I remember years ago, my, uh, Naomi and I were pastoring in another city, another time. And in our city, it was summertime. And there was a young high school boy that was swimming and was in a diving accident. And when he dove, he dove in shallow water and ended up breaking his back. And they flew this young boy. I think he was like a junior in high school. They flew this young boy to Bismarck Hospital. And... Um, it was certainly the talk of our small community. Everyone knew this family. They heard about the accident. And I was in my office one day at the church, and I was just kind of studying and praying and just talking to the Lord. And I heard the Lord say, uh, John, I want you to go uh, to Bismarck, and I want you to lay hands on this young man, and I want you to pray for him, and I'm going to heal his body. And so uh, I did what the Lord asked me to do got in the car, drove to Bismarck, and I went to the floor that this young man was in. His back was broken in several places. They said he would never walk again. When I saw him, they had him kind of in an unconscious state. And uh, it was on, I was the only person in this room. A low light was on. I still remember it this day. And I felt the presence of God. I felt that day that God was positioning me for a purpose. And I remember I laid my hand on this big guy, I laid it on his shoulder, would be his left shoulder. And I said, God, I pray life into this boy. He will not die. Not only do I pray life into him, I pray that you would raise him up and he will walk again in the name of Jesus. And then I went on and prayed this prayer. And Lord, when this miracle happens, 
I will go to this boy and his family and I will tell him this story and I will tell him that he is alive and walking today because of the power of God and that they as an individual, as families and as a boy, that they were truly the objects of God's love and God had a plan and purpose. The summer months kind of went by. The boy could not walk. He was in a wheelchair until God began to move. And God got him out and healed his back completely. It was the talk of the town, the scuttlebutt. And I remember one day I could see this school right across the street from where my church was. I looked out my office window and there was the elementary school where his mom worked. And I saw school had just ended. And I saw this young boy walk into school to greet and meet and be with his mom, catch a ride home. And as soon as I saw this boy walk into school, God prompted me of my prayer. And I went in and uh, knocked on the door. I think she taught kindergarten. I said, excuse me, hello. Um, I'm Pastor Brady from a, across the street. I said, oh, we know who you are, Pastor. Come on in. How can I help you? I said, I just want to talk to you a minute. And I had them seated, and I, and I told them the story. And God spoke to me. I went to the room and, and did da-da-da. And I told them, I said, you need to know that young man, that you are alive and well and walking today because of the power of God over your life and that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Don't ever forget it. Live for God every day. Mom and Dad, you need to know that your family is the object of God's love. and God has blessed you with a miracle today, your son. And I said, I want you to know that God loves you. And from this day on, I, you must live every day for Jesus. And Tears went everywhere, snot went flying. But it was a time that God was being glorified because God did it. The people said, Peter and John, how'd you do this? And Peter and John simply said, well, we didn't do anything. You think it's because of our righteousness? No, the miracle in this man's life is because of the glory and the power of God. Listen very carefully. When God moves and does something miraculously, the Holy Spirit's different picks up where we have to proclaim and preach the goodness of God's glory and power. In Acts chapter 3, you've got to proclaim it, preach it, tell your story. In Acts chapter 3, verse 12, we read, Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. He saw this moment to proclaim and to preach. That's the Holy Spirit's difference. And he said, people of Israel... What is so surprising about this? And why stare at us though we had made this man walk by our own power of godliness? For it is God of Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, the God of, of your forefathers, of your ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by healing this man. This is the same Jesus, you'll recall, whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate. Despite Pilate's decision, decision to release him, you rejected his, this holy, righteous one, and instead you demanded the release of a murderer. Barabbas, Barabbas! You killed the author of life, but God raised him up from the dead, and we are witnesses of this fact. And it was through faith in the name of Jesus that this man was healed, and you know how crippled he was before, but faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. I want to share with you a statement from a friend of mine. His name is Joe, Joe Oden. Joe is one of our leading Assemblies of God evangelists. God uses Joe in uh, supernatural and miraculous ways through signs, wonders, and miracles. Joe lives in uh, Dallas, Texas, and um, is an amazing man. When Joe got saved, the miracle of salvation came to Joe when he was a drug addict on LSD. He had been partying all night long. He came home and uh, was, and all of a sudden he began to turn on the TV to a Christian 
television station. This is four in the morning. He's been up all night doing drug and, drugging and drinking. And even in this state that he was in, the spirit of the, of the living God came into that house. And he was watching a Christian station and they were uh, talking directly to him. There is a man that you are in a position of under the influence of drugs and alcohol. You've been running from God for a long time, but God loves you and wants you tonight. And right there in a drunken uh, LSD uh, drug-induced situation, God sobered Joe up. He got on his knees, gave his heart to Christ. God called him to be one of our leading evangelists where signs, wonders, miracles take place. And this is what Joe said. Listen to my friend's words. It's very, very powerful. And Joe says to us today, experiencing the power of God in your life and through your life as you shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with the lost, the Holy Spirit will activate your faith to see the power of God flow through your life in in miracles and signs and wonders. Why? To win souls. Now is the time for the church to rise up in a great love, Holy Ghost boldness, and great power to reach the lost, to make disciples, and to put the gospel of compassion into action. God loves to do miracles. He's the God of miracles, and he wants to do miracles in your life this morning. But most importantly, God wants you to be saved. He wants you to have him in your life, in your heart. He wants you personally, because the message that Peter preached that day is the same message that is preached today. The message has never changed. It's the message of the cross. It's the message of Christ. It's the message of forgiveness. It's the message of heaven. And so Peter began to use that moment after that miracle to preach and to proclaim the message of salvation. Peter is saying, those of you at the sound of my voice, you have to own your sin and guilt. Ask the Holy Spirit to Bring conviction to areas of your life that are not right nor pleasing before God. If you choose to repent, turn from your sin, turning from your wicked ways, and turn back to God, the God of your forefathers, of your granddaddy, your great-granddaddy, and his great-granddaddy, if you choose to return, then God will forgive you of your sin. And let me tell you, the message has to be preached and proclaimed because each and every one of you at the sound of my voice today, we are personally responsible for what we do with Jesus Christ. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to quicken and make us alive, but can also convict us of our sin and of our flesh and things that separate us from God, things that are not right. We have to repent of those things. We've got to own it. God, what I'm doing now is wrong. It's it's sin against you. Sin against my family. It's it's just wrong. And then we have to move to the place of God. Please forgive me. Have mercy on me. Because I'm going to return. I'm going to turn. I'm going to run to you. Because all those that turn, return to God, they will be forgiven in the name of Jesus. We have a story to tell. Now the story that we need to tell for most parts with the early church did not happen in a facility such as this. But it happened on the streets. Each of you, when God gives you the opportunity, you have to tell your story. And you have to seize the moment of sharing Jesus Christ with other people in their time of need. It might be at work, it may be over lunch, it may be on a run, it may be whatever. Tell your story. That's the Holy Spirit difference. And last but not least, that the Holy Spirit's difference is always prophetic in the promises of God. Don't let those two words distract you. Prophetic, spoken by 
great people of the Old Testament. It's promise. They say that there's over 8,000 promises within the word of God. Find the one you need and, and claim it. In Acts chapter 3, verse 18, Peter and John began to experience the prophetic spirit and the promises of God in motion. And Peter proclaims, but God, I love that. Whenever you see but God, get ready for something special. But God was fulfilling, this is Peter preaching now, but God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about Jesus the Messiah, the one that was sent by God as the Savior of the world, that he had to suffer these things. And then he went on preaching. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times, this is prophetic and a promise, this is what you need to hear and underline. Ready? Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. And he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things, the return of the Lord, as God promised long ago through the holy prophets. Verse 22. Moses said that the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Listen very carefully to everything I'm about to tell you. Then Moses said, anyone who will not listen to the prophet will be that prophet. Jesus will be completely cut off from God's people. Starting with Samuel, every prophet spoke about what is happening today. And you are the children of those prophets. And you are included in the covenant promise, God's promise to you and your ancestors. For God said to Abraham, it's through your descendants, Abraham, that all the families on earth will be blessed. That's a promise. And when God raised up his servant Jesus from the dead, he sent him first to your people to bless you by turning each of you back from your sinful way. It's very, very important that we understand that God is alive and moving. That we are living in times where the Holy Spirit is wanting to be alive and well within us. There is a beautiful Holy Spirit's difference as we press into God. And I want, God wants you to have that. And the Holy Spirit difference that has been prophesied and promised throughout the creation of mankind is that God wants to be your God. He wants to be real. He wants to be near. He wants to be talked to. He wants to be worshipped. He wants to be loved. He wants to reveal himself to you in, in signs and wonders in powerful, intimate, personal way. God wants to position you to bless you. He wants to position you for a purpose. He wants to use you to tell your story to others who are lost and are in need of God. That's the prophetic and the promise and the times that Peter realized. And, and Peter learned that it was through Pentecost. It was through the promises of God that, that forgiveness was a promise to those who would just surrender their lives to Christ. You don't have to be, you can never be good enough or righteous, not by works of righteousness. The Bible says that we've done. So many times we think, well, if I could just be a better person. It's not that. It's all what you and I do with God's son, Jesus Christ. That there is a forgiveness of sin. There is a restoring, a bringing back of a right relationship of man and his God, even a nation in their God, if we return and, and repent and, and run to God. That's what we believe as believers. And then he says there's going to be times, listen, times of refreshing. In each of our lives, there are times that we are in desperate need of times of refreshing that we ask the Lord to help us in our loss, in our pain, in our darkness, in our despair, in our loneliness, in our fears, depression, hopelessness. Father, come, and the Holy Spirit wants to come and be real and near. I say to you today that the Holy Spirit of God is tangible, that you can sense him, you can feel him, you can hear him, you can discern him. That's what it means to be filled. body is the temple, the dwelling place of God, the Holy Spirit. 
And if that same spirit, God, that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, if he dwells in you, he's going to make your body, your life, your family, your marriage, your, 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 your life well and whole and strong. I want to pray um, this morning for three key needs, and I want to invite our worship team to come and prepare themselves. There are three directions that I want to pray, and I want you to listen very carefully. You may meet one, two, or all three of these, and uh, let me share with them. The first prayer that I want to pray this morning is for those of us who need a greater, more personal relationship with God. Whether it's the first time saying, you know, I've never given my life to Christ. I've never surrendered. No, I didn't know I had to. Well, you do. You need to allow God to, to show you your need for him. You need to own it. You need to repent of your sins. And then forgiveness will come. Salvation will come. <sighs> Peace and joy. I can't tell you how many people that, that we prayed sal- this prayer of salvation with that said, wow, I felt like the world was lifted off by me. And then times of refreshing comes. So if you are here this morning and you need to, you must invite Christ into your heart and life or re-invite Christ. Just say, Lord, I want to rekindle things. I want to make things afresh and new. Then you need to stand. If you are here, I just believe in my heart that there are some people here today that are on the edge God is positioning you for purpose. You don't quite know what that is as of now, but you want more of the Holy Spirit in your life. You want to be used in a greater way. I want to pray for you. And last but not least, I want to pray for miracles. If you are here today, and miracles are, 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 can be physical, they can be emotional, they can be relational, They can be of the heart. They can be of a life. God knows. And today, not by accident, but by divine appointment, each of us are positioned for a purpose. As I began to pray, either to rededicate your life or give your heart and life to Christ for the first time as Savior Lord, repentance of your sin and returning back to God, and I want you to stand. If, if you need Jesus, if you want to return to Jesus, if you are here today and you say, Pastor Brady, I, I want more of God, I want to be used by God, then I want you to stand with me now, please. Or if you are here today and you say, Pastor Brady, I stand in need of a miracle. I want God to position me for that miracle. Would you please stand now as I pray? Anyone? Don't miss out on this divine appointment. What if the man lame from birth decided to take that day off? He might have missed his miracle. Anyone else? Thank you. It takes courage to stand. I'm proud of you. Precious Heavenly Father, we all stand together. And Lord, there's one thing we need, and that's the Holy Spirit difference. Father, I pray for those who are standing maybe for the first time and they are surrendering their life to you. They are saying, Lord, please forgive me. I I am a sinner. I've sinned against you and others. I'm asking for your forgiveness of my sins. And Lord, come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my being. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that from this point on I can live for God and grow in God. I want my life to be personal and private with the Holy Spirit. I pray for those people here today, Lord, that desire to be used by you. There are people here to decide, saying, I want to be used by God. I want to be so full of the Holy Spirit that it just comes out of me and I believe God for miracles for people that there can be divine appointments when I can look at a friend or a family member and say, look at me. God has something for you. 
give us the boldness and the courage of the Spirit, the same Spirit of boldness that came into Peter and John. And Lord, last but not least, I pray for miracles. Lord, we all stand in need of miracles in some form, way, or fashion. All of my prayer needs of people are nothing that I could do to help. They all stand in need of a miracle. They are positioned today. We are positioned today like the man laying from birth to trust you, to stand firm and strong, to declare and shout, God has healed me. God has touched me. Let your miracle of your spirit now be released in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll,
Pastor John spoke this morning about the Spirit of God that's with us. I just want to conclude this morning with this prayer of blessing. From St. Patrick, it says, Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, and Christ in every ear that hears me. I just pray this morning that that Christ, that Holy Spirit that dwells within us, blesses you, remains with you, and surrounds you as you go this morning.